Hello, we wanted to make a quick video showing you uh, actually uh, three applications running on three different platforms. So we're going to show you an application running on the on an iPad 2, um, one running on a BlackBerry Playbook and then one running on an Android Samsung um, smartphone. The first application is GIS Roam which is a, um, a, a free application, well free, you, there's a paid for element to it but you can download it and use it for free which we're doing here. We've actually, Wolf GIS is, is somewhat similar to this application. It, it actually allows you to online and offline um, load uh, shapefiles um, which, which we've as a company, as Web Map Solutions as a company have, have had a lot of demand or a lot of requ requests from potential clients for. So, um, and the offline piece is, is the key piece particularly for a lot of these questions. So what we did was we took the data and it's interesting that uh, GIS Roam is exactly the same parcel data for their sample data as DeWolf GIS. So these guys are either know one another quite well or a cop somebody's copying somebody else. Anyway. This is loaded on a on a, um, a Google Maps base map. The application JS Roam only runs on the on the uh, iOS on the Apple on Apple devices. Um, it's quite well designed. We, we, we quite like it. It's taken us a while to understand how to work. It isn't as intuitive as we'd like. Um, we we've done a lot of JS application over the years, and, and we think they've done a good job, but. The flow needs some thinking about, I think, at times, because it's not obvious what one does to, to do certain functions. But anyway, this is a shapefile. As you can see in pan mode, it, it works really nicely. Looks great as well. Um, one thing we really didn't like, which we wanted to show you, don't get us wrong, we like GIS Roam, but we really didn't like the fact that when you zoom in, um, or zoom out and zoom in, um, the actual image that, that, is, that represents a shapefile disappears and, and reappears. Um, that is really quite, we really don't like that at all. We'd like it to stay in place. In fact, we'll show you an application in a minute which does stay in place. So we don't like that piece. Um, the attributes, the way they've done attributes is interesting. If we wanted to actually look at the attributes of a particular, um, of a particular parcel or group of parcels, you select this the select tool and then you draw um, a, a polygon around the uh, the parcels that you want and actually selects any ones that you touch so you get multiple parcels it's not so easy to actually let's see if we can do it no. oh yeah you can there we go that's that's actually there we go so if you wanted one parcel that's nice actually you want one parcel it comes up and pulls up a um, a window which sits over the top of the map. So uh, we, not, we, we like the way they're doing this, showing the attributes for a particular parcel, but we don't like the way it's in a mo it's in a sort of a modal way that you can't actually interact with the map. It just sits over the top, and you can't actually look at what's underneath. So the attributes window and the map are kind of separate entities. We'd like them to be one, but that's quite nice the way they do that. And you can actually, as I showed you, you can actually select multiple. Um, parcels and get a listing of those as well. So, not a bad effort from JS Roam, I think. I think that uh, the flow needs needs some work. I think definitely the way that they they work with the shape file, when you zoom in and zoom out, um, needs some work. And, and and actually, Wolf JS is not dissimilar. Some of the stuff we're talking about here applies to Wolf JS, but but a pretty good effort from from JS Roam. We expect to. Uh, we expect to see some uh, improvements in the future and I look forward to seeing those because we, we like the application. So that's GIS Roam and that's the iPad. Let me just move that out of the way. Let's pull out a... What you're looking at here is a, is a, a BlackBerry Playbook. So you can see it's quite a bit smaller than the iPad. Now this is an application that we've written, Web Map Solutions. This is... Um, this is called GeoMobile for ArcGIS, another free application. It's uh, it's a cross-platform application. This one, so unlike GIS Roam and Wolf GIS, um, it actually runs across multiple platforms. So we've actually got it in the BlackBerry Playbook App World, or the BlackBerry App, app World, I should say, the Apple App World, and the um, the Android Market as well. So it it runs across all. Um, I, I really just wanted to show you the shape file here. I mean, the, the application itself has got lots of. Uh, it's got lots of tools and it, it, it's, it loads ArcGIS layers. Um, again, GIS Roman and WolfGIS don't work with a special server that we can tell. Um, this actually works directly with ArcGIS, but we've also added the ability to load shapefiles. And you'll see here that, uh, that there's a shapefile um, that's been loaded. It's actually the counties of, of Utah. Um, and as you saw as we zoomed in there, you didn't get that flick, that disappearing and reappearing. 
um, of the shape file. So we much we like that more than we like the way GIS Rome are doing it. But the downside, which GIS don't 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 suffer, is that we actually redraw this each time. So um, when you pan across, you can see that you'll watch it redraw at the top here. So there's a downside to this approach. We kind of like some of this approach, and we like some of the GIS Rome approach. So we're actually working on making something better than both. But uh, I wanted to show you this one just uh, as a comparison with JS Rome. So that's the playbook. Um, there's videos on our website that talk more about that application, the um, GeoMobile for ArcGIS. Now, this one, I'm going to have to try and ensure I stick, keep this in the camera. This is actually uh, some work we're doing with offline. So even though it says in the top left-hand corner, online, it is online, this one. It's actually pulling files from the, the local, it's pulling files from the local um, cache. So we've cached the base map tiles and we've cached this image here, which is, well, this, not image, this um, shape file, which again is drawn in a similar way to the one we just, we just showed. So again, you'll see something similar to what we saw before. It doesn't just disappear and reappear. It is redrawing. You can see that just there. Um, what we wanted to show you with this was the actual, uh, the way we're handling attributes. So this bottom right, right hand corner county is called San Juan and when you tap it you actually get a pop-up and again it's on a smaller screen so there you actually see the attributes and the map blender together so it doesn't sit over the top in the way that JS Rome does you can actually interact with the map you can close that you could tap some other ones and, and come up with the information so sort of a, in our view a better experience a more GIS type experience this is the kind of thing you're probably more familiar with seeing on, on uh, particularly on ArcGIS applications um, again this is an air application it resembles the flex viewer that uh, the Esri flex viewer um, I think it's called ArcGIS for flex they'll know they've renamed it now they're supporting it anyway that's a nice approach we like that the other thing we've added to this is the ability to edit so if you hit this button at the top here it actually shows you those attributes and I'm going to try and move and, and not close this application and show you how you edit it so if we wanted just to change the county number here we can go in and change it to let's see here let's change it to four so there that is and we can now save that so you can see the the county number is now 194 and we save that um, uh, and that will be saved off to a local file and then at some point synced to uh, to sent to a to a GIS administrator who would then um, be able to do a, a sanity check and then update the database so a nice way to do editing um, a, a nice way to present a shape file not perfect but uh, but a nice way to do it and, and we like the way that that, that attributes arrow is an, an, an info box is blended into the map and does, just doesn't sit over the top and obscure everything so uh, that's uh, that's that's our video thanks for watching